in the last few years, we've discussed the mystery of fast radio bursts quite a lot. Mostly because these are really fascinating and mysterious radio signals that seem to come from all over the place and seem to be produced by somewhat different events, but also usually involve something ridiculously powerful. Here, in just a fraction of a second, something ends up releasing a huge amount of energy all at once, roughly equivalent to the brightness of 500 million suns, but only visible for a fraction of a second and only visible in radio light. And well, since 2007, hundreds and hundreds of such events have already been confirmed and more are being discovered pretty much every single day. And so because this is still a pretty big mystery for a lot of radio astronomers, this is actually something super fascinating. But extremely recently, a very weird, very short and extremely strong radio signal has been actually detected completely by accident and made no sense for approximately one year. But now, in a recent study, researchers finally explain exactly what happened here and why this actually is not really that mysterious after all. It seems to be a dead satellite. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, starting with why this signal was actually kind of exciting. And that's because when it comes to fast radio bursts, one of the most exciting signals was officially discovered in 2020. On April 28th of 2020, a team of researchers using a Canadian radio telescope discovered something actually coming from the Milky Way galaxy and not from somewhere far away. And it was coming from a direction of a very famous magnetar, SGR 1935 plus 2154. And this was probably one of the most significant events in the recent history of radio astronomy because it officially suggested that FRBs in many cases are indeed produced by magnetars. This was the first official confirmation that a magnetar can indeed produce radio signals of this type. But much more importantly, this was the first and the only signal from the Milky Way. And at a distance of 30,000 light years away from us, this was obviously the closest. And naturally, researchers thought that, okay, well, if we found one so quickly, we might be able to find another one, thus potentially solving some other mysteries, such as, for example, why some FRBs seem to repeat and why some of them seem to be ridiculously short. For example, instead of being in milliseconds, some can also be in microseconds. And the shortest signal so far only lasted for one microsecond. And these ultra-short FRBs make absolutely no sense. We've talked about this on the channel before, but you can also learn about this in one of the studies in the description on the detection of ultra-fast radio bursts from the FRB you see here. And while it just so happens that in 2024, when radio astronomers were using the famous ASCAP, the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder, they once again picked up something super bizarre, an extremely strong signal, but this one even shorter. It was only about 30 nanoseconds in total, making this approximately 30 times faster than the fastest FRB we've seen so far. And so because it was so powerful and because it was so fast, this was suddenly super exciting. Especially because at first, the analysis suggested it was actually coming from within the Milky Way again. And so here radio astronomers potentially discovered a new signal that could actually explain to us how some of these super short signals are formed and what potentially forms them. But there was something super strange about it. And the strangest part was that, while scanning the night skies, the ASCAP telescope system could not actually focus on it very well. And specifically, out of 36 radio telescopes that are usually used to detect very distant signals, only some of them could actually see the signal, with the other ones only seeing a part of it. And while well, based on this, researchers realized that there's a very high chance it's coming to us from much, much closer. And so by using a best fit analysis, they realized it's probably coming from less than 20,000 kilometers away from planet Earth. And so it was extremely likely coming from the Earth's orbit. But some of the preliminary investigations revealed no radio satellites in this location, and none of them should be able to produce something as strange as this. Especially because the signal was only 30 nanoseconds and quite powerful. This type of a short burst is not something we typically expect from any kind of a radio transmission. And so for several months there was this bizarre mystery of a very powerful radio pulse, practically outshining everything else in radio frequencies, but only for a few nanoseconds. And exactly where it came from was completely unknown. Until of course now. And so here by comparing the signal location to orbits of thousands of different satellites, they eventually discovered one that was in exactly the same spot and it was a satellite system almost no one remembered. 
because this was Relay 2, an early radio communication satellite launched in 1964 that served as the primary experimental communication satellite during the first few years of this space race. And here the main point was to obviously produce some kind of a radio satellite in order to have some kind of a radio communication with planet Earth. And though today we obviously take a lot of these communication satellites for granted, with many of them located in the geostationary orbit, and obviously providing things like smartphone service, it was really because of these early experiments, with many of them actually failing, that engineers were eventually able to create something that we now use every day. And intriguingly, Relay 1, so basically the cousin of Relay 2, provided the first ever TV transmission across the ocean. Specifically, was able to broadcast TV stations from the United States to Japan, which though at first was supposed to be the greeting from the American president, turned out to be the news about JFK's assassination. But within just a few months, it was also used to broadcast Summer Olympics from Tokyo, thus proving the concept of radio communication, which turned out to work pretty well. And this was the proof of concept everybody needed with a few additional satellites, eventually leading to the satellite radio communication era. But eventually both satellites failed. Really, two stopped working in 1967, and nothing has been heard about them ever since. But because both are orbiting pretty far from planet Earth, they're still going to stay in orbit for a pretty long time. And so bizarrely enough, this particular signal seems to have come from Relay 2. But how is that even possible? Well, in this case, because it's an extremely fast signal, or basically it's a burst, it's extremely unlikely to be the result of the satellite reactivating. And instead, it probably has something to do with one of two phenomena. The most obvious one is maybe a micrometeorite. If a tiny particle strikes the satellite, it can actually result in the production of a lot of charged plasma, which as a result produces a micro flash of radio light. Now, because similar emissions have been seen before from other satellites, here this is maybe one of the potential explanations. But the second explanation is a little bit more bizarre, but may also be a little bit more important if it's true. This could also be a type of electrostatic discharge. And in this case, years of buildup of electricity may eventually result in a spark-like flash, suddenly discharging very high voltage and thus producing radio emissions resembling a radio burst. But exactly which of these explanations is correct is currently unknown, because both would look very similar and both could be quite possible. But by studying this signal and by studying additional signals similar to this, it could help scientists and engineers figure out how these electrostatic discharges happen around various satellites and various spaceships, mostly because in some cases they can lead to a lot of damage. And so here one of the conclusions from the study is of course that we can now maybe use the radio observations to track, detect and analyze various electrostatic discharges coming from objects in the orbit of planet Earth. And these discharges can be pretty dangerous for spacecraft systems. As a matter of fact, there's even a very recent example. Galaxy 15 satellite potentially failed in 2010 because of the gradual degradation of solar arrays as a result of these very bizarre discharges. And so today it's actually tumbling all over the place around planet Earth. And so in this case, it's quite possible that by using low frequency ground-based radio monitors, there might be a way to study these phenomena even better thus allowing engineers to figure out how to avoid them in various satellite systems in the future. But right now, except for occasional observations, including the most recent one in 2017 by the Arecibo Observatory, no systematic research on this phenomena has been conducted yet. We just know that these discharges are real, they can possibly damage any spacecraft or satellite, and thus we do need to understand them just a little bit better. And so here, instead of a fast radio burst, researchers potentially discovered a new way to discover something else in order to protect satellites. Now, unless, of course, this was a micrometeoroid, in which case, well, stuff like that just happens. But anyway, I thought this was a pretty interesting discovery because this unusual fast radio burst was actually bugging scientists for several months now. But obviously a lot of other FRBs are still unexplained, and that means that we're going to come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and some other stuff, or by joining the channel membership where you get early access and a few more things. Or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.